Welcome back to Racing Direct, guys. We are still reacting to that crazy inaugural Lando Norris win in Miami. I mean, what an absolute scene that was. But the main question that's now on everybody's mind is how exactly did McLaren do it? And can they actually be serious competitors to Red Bull? So that is exactly what we're going to look at today. But of course, you already know the magic words. Before we do that, make sure you hit subscribe. It only takes two seconds to hit that button, and it really, really helps. Leave your comments and likes and shares, and let's jump right into this. So McLaren did announce before they went into Miami that they were going to be bringing a heavy upgrade package, but we didn't really know the extent of how big it was going to be. We got our answer once the race weekend rolled around. McLaren was pretty much fast all weekend. It didn't really seem to matter if it was practice, the sprint, qualifying, they had seriously done something to that car that was working magic. Now, it wasn't perfect. We all saw the difference between the medium tires and the soft tires, but overall, they did make massive games that absolutely paid off. Now, the name of the game for McLaren on these upgrades was Downforce. Now, obviously, you can say, well, you can just add a bigger rear wing or a bigger front wing to increase downforce. However, of course, we all know that creates a lot of drag on the straights, and in F1, you need to be fast everywhere, and of course, creating drag at a track like Miami, there were some pretty long straights was not going to do them well. However, McLaren's engineers found clever ways to make gains in all aspects without sacrificing that top and speed. They completely reshaped the bodywork and the engine cover, they added new inlets to the side pods, there was even a reshaped section at the back that sort of resembles the coke bottle that you can see towards the rear of the car. Pretty much everything in the name of downforce, increasing the airflow, maximizing the full potential of this chassis. They also did change the front wing, they didn't really make it any bigger in that sense, but they did change a bit of the design to once again affect the airflow, making sure that McLaren's downforce only consisted of clean air. And of course, to take advantage of all those new air channels that are being pushed from the front to the back of the car, they also did make some small changes to the rear wing and the brake duct inlets. Now, unsurprisingly, Lando's car was the only one that was running the full upgrade package. Zach Brown did say that Oscar Piastri's was sort of a light upgrade. They obviously, this is something they do all the time in Formula 1. Only one of the team's cars will get the full new upgrade package, while the other one will get nothing, or it might get a little bit, like in this case, Oscar Piastri did. Now, obviously, after seeing how successful it was on Lando's car, it's pretty much a guarantee that Oscar is going to get the full treatment for Imola. Now, as mentioned before, it wasn't 100% perfect. Uh, to be honest, no F1 upgrade ever is. There's always going to be little flaws that the engineers can find and perfect and retune. And in this case, well, pretty much anybody in the general audience could see what the main issue was. These upgrades were doing absolute wonders on the medium tires. However, the soft tires, which historically should be much faster than the mediums or the hards, were actually slower. We saw that in qualifying where Lando Norris topped the charts in Q2. However, Q3 rolls around, they put the softs on, and they just couldn't get the tires warmed up. You could see it was sliding around all over the place, and Andrea Stella believes that had something to do with those new upgrades. That is something they do need to figure out. They need to work out the balance with these new adjustments they made to the aero and the downforce and see why this is having a negative effect on the soft tires, but is having a tremendously positive effect on the mediums. Now, honestly, that's a pretty good problem to have, I would say. It's not like you have a dog of a car way at the back of the field and everything has to be rebuilt. This should be something that the engineers can figure out pretty swiftly. Now, the main question everyone has now is can McLaren actually challenge Red Bull or was this just an anomaly? Now, if I'm giving my honest point of view, I don't really know if they're there just yet. I would still label this as an anomaly. We just know how dominant Red Bull is and I'm certain they're going to bring their own upgrades as well in the near future. We already said that Ferrari is working on upgrades. They caught the call from McLaren. They see that they mean business and they want to make sure that McLaren does not surpass them. So it's only natural to think Red Bull will be doing the same to make sure their competitors stay well behind them. Now, in this case, I do think McLaren has made up significant ground on Red Bull. And it's one of those things where we could honestly see them maybe compete for a pole position. However, the big thing is the race pace. We've all seen that on some occasions, Ferrari can give a serious fight to Red Bull for the pole position, but when the race rolls around, Red Bull sails off into the sunset. Nobody can match their race pace. That is the big thing that McLaren needs to focus on. And Andrea Stella, with his comments about the mediums to the soft tires and the huge discrepancy between the two on this new upgrade package, that is obviously something that needs to be worked out. Now, yes, that is mainly a qualifying issue because technically you don't even need to use the softs in the race, but your car should be able to perform well on all tires. 
and you can say what you want about Max Verstappen potentially having floor damage after running over that cone, and yes, he was complaining about the balance as well, but you can't ignore the fact that Lando Norris was setting some absolutely incredible times and was building up a serious gap over Verstappen. These upgrades definitely mean business, they are absolutely for real, and then when Piastri gets them as well and both McLarens are competing with them, I could actually see them maybe taking the fight to Ferrari for second place in the constructors, I still think Red Bull is a bit down the road. However, if they can evolve this upgrade package and continue to find ways to make this new clean downforce as Andrea Stella has been labeling it, yes, Red Bull do need to be weary of these guys. It was extremely exciting to see somebody different win a Grand Prix for a change. Again, no offense to Verstappen and Red Bull fans out there, but nobody disliked seeing Norris win that Miami Grand Prix. Let's be honest, that was absolutely epic to watch. And if we can see him fighting at the front with Verstappen and Perez more often, that would be awesome. And the same goes for Oscar Piastri too, once he gets an upgrade package. So final verdict, do I actually think McLaren are for real at the moment and can seriously fight Red Bull for the rest of the season? Not quite yet, I'm still convinced that this was a little bit of an anomaly on this occasion, however they are absolutely trending in the right direction, I believe they will take the fight to Ferrari for second place in the constructors, you look at the point standings right now, they're honestly not that far off too early into the season, and Ferrari need to have a big answer back with their upgrade package if they want to make sure McLaren stays behind them. But obviously, this is a very exciting topic. If anybody can really, really compete at the front with Rebel, it's very exciting for the fans and for Formula 1 as a whole. So let me know what you guys think about this situation. Was this a supreme one-off performance for McLaren and Lando Norris? Or can they actually repeat this and seriously take the fight to Red Bull? Give me those thoughts down below, guys. Of course, I'll remind you again to hit that big subscribe button. Really, really appreciate it. We'll see you next time on Racing Direct.